Um, but what, what was all of this about? I mean, did it affect any change? This change of, of trying to block, a, a, to end the blockade. Did the fact that over 650 of us went to Israeli prison for anywhere from two to four days, and then did getting deported from Israel, most of us flying back on, on passenger jets furnished by the, the government of Turkey. They flew in three large, large, big passenger jets, and those were on the ground for over 15 hours as we were being processed, processed out of the prison and then taken to Ben Gurion Airport where great brutality was used. I mean, there were a lot of people that got beaten up by the Israelis, a lot of them. And I saw four of them myself as they were coming through the airport and being pulled out of lines and taken into, into rooms and beaten up. Even women were being slapped around. We had 11 women that were the last ones out of, out of the prison. I was a part of that 11. We were staying in prison in solidarity with anyone else who might still be in prison, even though we didn't know if there were any. But we just decided we would, we would be there as the last ones out. Well, the prison warden didn't like that much. And by the time they, we finally got out of there and they put us in a prison van, strangest vans I've ever seen with little cubicles in it where you sit. And as they took us two hours to the Big Gurian Airport, then left us on the tarmac in that little tin box for the next five hours uh, with us beating on the wall saying, you know, there's some women in here, some older women. We need to go to the bathroom. Let us out. And all of those young guards, all those young army people, all those young immigration people standing right there going, don't hear a thing. Don't hear a thing. And when we came out of that van five hours later, and as we were giving them an earful of how, what we thought about their professionalism, and as we were walking up the stairway into the upper part of the Big Green Airport to get processed out, all of a sudden a big hand came slapping across, hitting a woman from Greece right in the side of the face. Well, you know, it's it's not much compared to what happened to a lot of people, but it's it's indicative of the treatment that we were getting there at that airport. Um, it took 15 hours to get everyone processed out of the prison and through Big Durian Airport and to make sure with all of the, the leaders of all the organizations that everyone had been accounted for, that we knew exactly who was still in an Israeli hospital. And there were quite a few that were still there because they were so seriously wounded that the Israelis said they are too unstable to move. And a Turkish doctor brought in to stay with those, with those injured people until they could be moved. After 15 hours, those three jets took off and off we went to Istanbul, Turkey. We left uh, Tel Aviv, Ben Gurion Airport about 1.30 in the morning and landed at 3.30 in Istanbul and put on buses and taken out of the airport down to a medical facility where we were to be checked and to do the processing out and tens of thousands of Turkish citizens along the road tens of thousands of them to be there to say what you did was right. What you did was right. And even though they had had nine, eight, nine of their own citizens killed and 50 of them wounded, they were there standing in solidarity. Well, what did happen? Very quickly, you, the people of America, the people all over the world were outraged by what had happened, by the brutality. And they were on the streets all over the world, just like you saw in the, in the um, pictures there. And they were putting pressure on their governments to say to the, the Israeli government, you have to stop this blockade. And within two days, all of a sudden, the Israeli government was saying, we may modify this. And now we have it, that indeed they have modified that blockade. That indeed there are more items that are being able to go into Gaza. That there are part of the, the humanitarian, the, the construction materials coming off the ships that we took in there are starting to be moved into, into Gaza to be placed in the hands of the United Nations or other international organizations. Uh, it's not over yet, though. I mean, that's the small part of this whole thing. We have to watch very carefully to see how much more is going to be allowed in. And not one thing has changed about the movement of people. People are still under the same restrictions. They cannot move. So that's where the next part of this comes in. There's going to be another flotilla, a flotilla in late September or early October. And what we're trying to do is to 
raise money so that there can be a U.S. show, a U.S. show taking American citizens, not just 14 citizens, but lots of Americans who say, we as American citizens are irate about what our government's doing in, in the protection of Israel when Israel does these types of things. That indeed, if you're a friend of anyone, that you need to call their hand when they're doing things that are wrong, that are harmful for them and harmful for us. Because what the Israeli government has been doing is and the protection the United States has given is really dangerous for our own national security. It makes people all over the world question, hate what America is. So it is a challenge. We are challenging our own government, our Obama administration, who when he met with Netanyahu just a, a week ago, uh, said the same things that have been said forever. The enduring friendship, who will protect Israel no matter what that Israel stands outside the non-proliferation treaty. Their nuclear weapons program can do whatever because of the unique security circumstances Israel has. The only country in the world that America says should be able to do that. Um, uh, a president of the United States that warns in that same press conference where he's standing by Netanyahu, doesn't warn Netanyahu about those illegal settlements that continue in the West Bank, doesn't warn them about the buffer zone, the 300 meter buffer zone, 1,000 foot buffer zone now into Gaza. It's a free fire zone for the Israeli soldiers. He doesn't warn them about that. He doesn't talk about the tunnels that have been keeping people alive. What he did was tell the Palestinians, don't embarrass the Israelis. So we have a lot of work, of course, we know, again, for our own government. And this is a challenge to the Obama administration, and it's a challenge to the Israeli government policies. And it's a challenge to the European community countries that participate in this, this blockade. So if you would like to participate, if you would like to give money to help us raise anywhere from $300,000 to $370,000 in six weeks, I mean, normally we can't raise $500 for, you know, to keep a peace center going. But what we're trying to do is $370,000 so we can get us a ship and we can put Americans on it to be there to challenge. Only 14 Americans as a part of this last hotel out of 750. That's pretty pitiful. So if you all want to help us, we can, we've got fiscal sponsors that are willing to stand up. They're willing to say to the U.S. Supreme Court, you know, in its decision what, uh, two weeks ago that says that if you talk to any group that America has put on a terrorist list, if you talk to them about issues of peace and nonviolence, that you can be arrested and charged with material aid to a terrorist organization, even if you're talking about peace and nonviolence. Now, how outrageous is that? Because the rationale is they could use that, they could turn it for their violent purposes when you talk to them about nonviolence. So we have fiscal sponsors that say, this is the most idiotic thing in the world. Besides, we're not talking to terrorist groups. We are working with the people of Gaza and to help the people of Gaza. I'm not, a, uh, Hamas is out of the picture. We're doing stuff for the people of Gaza. And if you would like to help us with any donations of cash, or if you want to have a check, we have a fiscal sponsor for checks that are under $150. It's a group called Stand for Justice. And if you have over $150 and want to make out a check, it's for the Institute for Media Analysis. And you come and be with us on a boat. Be on a boat for Gaza. So we are going to get this money. I have no doubt about it, and we are going to be a part of that flotilla that's going to go in late September and early October. 